Okay. So stuff so, still going on in Gaza? Yeah. I mean, by stuff, we mean like literally bombs throughout the night. Gaza has been entirely under fire. You know, when we go to sleep, they wake up. So they woke up to, uh, you know, after a night of gigantic uh, b- bombs and nonstop just destruction, right? Uh, brought br- like it's just continuous. And I'm not going to stop talking about it until it stops and even after that because this has been going on forever but i don't think it's ever been uh brought up to the attention of so many people like it has been now so um let's start with that's the first tweet let's start with this um tweet right here that was last night 18 hours ago this is gaza right now make no mistake every single administration from biden to trump to obama to bush to clinton and back to 1948 is complicit in the genocide of Palestinians. And if you just take a look at those pictures, they will t- say everything I need to say. I mean, the picture's worth a thousand words. You guys really, really is. Um, there were a couple things I wanted to point out. The electronic antifada. I, I put two sources here talking about this. So Israel continued to kill more children and more doctors in a nighttime massacre. Okay. They also bombed the roads to the hospitals so people couldn't even get to the hospital by the way so this was in the early hours of sunday night um multiple generations were obliterated when uh israel bomb homes in gaza around 1 a.m israeli warplanes launched a savage bombing campaign lasting at least an hour firing 50 missiles at the area surrounding al wita street in gaza city Without warning, the bombs hit residential buildings, bringing them down on top of those inside. The death toll from the attack has risen to 42, including 10 children and 16 women. 50 more were wounded. Two prominent doctors were among the dead. As of Sunday evening, rescuers were still searching for survivors under the rubble. The death toll is almost 200 people, at least 192. It's gone up since then, actually. 58 children and 34 women more than 1,200 people have been injured. Yeah. And um, that's just mostly what I yeah. wanted to point out from there. And it just talks about deaths. It doesn't talk about displacement. It talks, it yeah. talks about your house being blown down. Where do you go from there then? Or After you yeah. have nothing. Exactly. You know, I saw a, a picture of two kids smiling because they were able to save their mm-hmm. fish while their whole freaking house was been bombed down to the ground. Got no place to go. Yeah. And it doesn't talk about, you know, somebody losing an arm, losing an eye, yes. losing a leg. Those are injuries. Like when, you, when people say injuries, <laughs> you have to think of how vast these injuries. And, you know, when we saw the film Gaza Fights for Freedom, you looked, you see, you see these people, they, they can't, they could potentially fix their leg. But you know why they can't? Because they can't leave. Israel prevents them from leaving to even get aid. To, to like fix themselves like you, they can't even do that this is why it's an open air prison they can't go anywhere yeah. they can't go in the sea they can't go the other way towards west can't jerusalem go anywhere. they can't like two it's, million people jammed in and it's a very very densely populated area right um and yeah so oh god like there's just i just i wanted to show this other source so you don't say so people don't say oh we only show the you know electronic Electronic antifada Antifada. because it's pro whatever so exactly um so again it (laughs) journalists are also in danger um they they again they killed 42 civilians it's the same thing i mean they're saying the same thing this one says 197 people so more people than 192 there's just a lot a lot of just stories of people getting rescued. A lot of the fatalities, of course, are women and children, which shouldn't be um, the thing, right? That shouldn't be uh, allowed. So I wanted to read a few tweets from this person, uh, Omar Gharib. Gra- uh, this person is in Palestine, and they said, uh, horrific night this was right out of my window and in my area i don't know how to describe it some things you just can't describe it felt like i am in horror movie but thank god we are still alive so this is from someone that's over there and they're seeing this right outside their window this is like the the terror that people are describing um and he also said Another sleepless night. The sun is slowly rising. The sky is pink. The clouds seem extra heavy. My ears are still buzzing. May today be better and less horrific than yesterday. When you talk about, you know, people um, getting bombed, when people getting getting bombed and people getting like attacked, you don't talk about the psychological effects either. 
like the psychological effects of actually going through that what it does to an adult and then imagine what that does to a child yeah right that the child the children that are getting like living with this like when you talk about early childhood development some of the the most crucial times as a child are are what you are doing when you are pretty much the, from the ages of like one and six like that's like very crucial moments so think about how all these kids that are there are are growing up in this it's definitely ptd pst ptsd will be on their in their lives for the rest of their lives no matter what yeah. when you're hearing that sound and what's going on and like you said from the ages of one to six it's it's going to be wired in there right now uh you're not going to be able to live a a peaceful life because you're going to always have those forms those of anxiety and those yeah. traumas inside and it's just downright disgusting so. so jacob magid said breaking for the third time in a week the u.s is blocking a joint there statement from the security council the u.n security council calling for an immediate ceasefire between israel and hamas two diplomats involved told the times of israel this is the times of israel saying this by the way yeah. the statement was introduced by norway tunisia and china following today's emergency session on the escalation in Israel and Gaza and criticize both sides for the ongoing violence. This is a lukewarm statement. This is a lukewarm solution. They're even, they're not even, they're criticizing, they're both citing the situation, but they're calling for a ceasefire. Yeah. The US mission did not immediately respond to the request to comment on that matter. The US refuses to sign on to this as lukewarm as it is. And uh, the U.S. said they're working tirelessly through diplomatic channels to try and bring an oh, end to this conflict, tirelessly. meaning by talking and speaking to Netanyahu. By the way, breaking news, Joe Biden and Netanyahu are supposed to be speaking right now or have spoken just recently, like as of the last hour. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, 14 out of the 15 uh, Security Council members sought to issue a joint statement which requires unanimous approval. After closed emergency meetings on Monday and Wednesday, but the United States, of course, refuses to to fucking uh, support this. And it, like I said, it requires unanimous decision. So that's all. But they have veto it. power too. So why? What's the whole the fucking sense of the UN and the Security Council when they have ultimate veto power to stop this shit? It's bullshit. This is bullshit. Um. So you know, I'm not a huge fan of Al Jazeera, but they're there. <laughs> they got attacked. Um. Al Jazeera. Post, it has a thread on this so they have the latest updates uh, till may 17th and they talked about how you know more f of firing the second week as rates were carried out in the early hours of monday today remember they're hours ahead of us so you can see some of these pictures i just wanted to, to point that out like the numbers are the same almost between 190 to 197 palestinians 58 children i mean these aren't just numbers these are people's lives these are entire families being wiped out i know it seems like numbers to us because we're here but yeah. that's, I mean, that's a lot of people. Can I ask a question, Johnny? If you were watching a, a basketball game and the score was 202 to 7, would you say that's an evenly matched basketball team game and stuff? I mean, like, that's the numbers here. When people are saying, well, this is both sides. No, it's, a hundred, it's 202 to 7. Is that an evenly matched fucking game? Yeah, I mean, I don't really want to use a basketball reference, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's not une it's not even. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I I'm just trying to get across to people out there who like or are not involved with this stuff, who don't pay attention to this stuff, who will say, "Well, I heard it's both sides. Doesn't Israel have a right to defend itself? Right. Defend itself? This isn't defense. I mean, this is not defense. Yeah, this is this is this. It's again, they can't escape. It's not war because people are like, "Well, this is a war." No, it's no, not, it's not even war. war. This is an outright genocide. They're killing people, knowing that they these people can't escape. Um, so this is a uh, Huda or yeah, who posted a picture is worth a thousand words, and there's somebody in the rubble right there alive. They're finding people still under the rubble right now, and this isn't caused by an earthquake. This isn't caused by an accident or a fire or a building randomly collapsing. This is caused by, intentionally by uh, targeted strikes from the states or the, the, the occupation of Israel, right? Um, so I have a couple of things I wanted to read here from the Washington Post because I, I figured it was important to point out. They talk about the Israeli airstrikes killing more people um, and they... They specifically talk about how Biden and uh, Netanyahu were, were speaking because when Biden says he's speaking to his contacts in the Middle East, he means Netanyahu. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I wanted to point out what what to know. How do I get to that part? OK, what what to uh -huh. know about. 
the well you can here's what to know israeli airstrikes early sunday targeted several houses on a main road near shifa hospital leaving at least 42 dead as emergency workers sifted the rubble for bodies two hamas fired a barrage of rockets towards tel aviv and southern israel throughout the night and into sunday uh, three, Palestinian death toll in Gaza climbed to 192, including 58 children, according to the local health officials. In the West Bank, at least 15 Palestinians have been killed since Friday, officials said there. Uh, a disabled Israeli man was killed Saturday in a rocket strike in a Tel Aviv suburb, raising the death toll to, in Israel to 10. I'm sorry, it wasn't seven, it was 10. Uh, the UN Security Council met in open uh, session Sunday after the two closed door meetings in the last week to discuss ways to de-escalate the conflict. Uh, uh, Jesus. Haiti, uh, um, Haiti Amar, the U.S. Uh, Deputy Assistant Secretary of the State for Israeli-Palestinian Affairs, met with Israeli Defense Ministry Benny Gantz on Sunday to discuss a ceasefire, but Prime Minister uh, Benjamin Netanyahu has said the military operation was expected to last at least several more days. Okay, so um, that's just giving you an overview of what you know what what the the mainstream media is even putting out because they they can't they have to put this out like they when people are actually dying you have physical proof right that these people are dying they have to say that like they can't just make up a number but what they can do is twist it to say oh like you know it's this conflict that is going on instead of saying oh this is a genocide. You know, this is apartheid. This is genocide. This is an open air prison. They're not going to say that, even though that's what's happening. But they have to account for the bodies. Now, I do want to point out that um, as of today, there was the director of civil defense in northern Gaza confirmed that since this morning, the occupation fired eight internationally banned phosphorus shells yes. into Gaza. That is, in, again, the phosphorus gas is an internationally banned substance. Yeah. Weapon. They cannot use it. So they're yeah. violating international law. Israel's violating international law with impunity, right? They're getting zero punishment, zero pushback. So Israel, I guess, is accountable to nobody. They can do what they want. That is not okay. Where's the UN? Where, where, where are all these organizations that are supposed to exist in order to protect something like that happening? This yeah. is sounding a lot to me like Nazi Germany yeah. and like everybody just standing on the sidelines and being like, oh, okay, well, what are we going to do? Yeah. And then you vilify people like China. China is the one that's calling for a ceasefire. One well, of the, like, this is fucking ridiculous. It seems a lot like Nazi Germany, the way the U.S. kind of supplied the Nazi regime, whatnot. They're supplying Israel right now. Like, hey, test out these new weapons right here for you because they're using all the new state-of-the-art weapons, napalm which is kind of a form of white phosphorus, was banned after Vietnam. And yet the fact that they're still using it, it's disgusting. And, and this right here, fam, this tweet you put up here is heartbreaking. Yeah, so let's watch this Ten because I just old. want to point out, these are just kids. Ten these are just kids that old. are seeing that. I'm always sick. I'm always, I don't know. I can't do anything. Can you all of this? What, what do you expect me to do? Fix it? I'm only 10. I can't even deal with anything in this morning. I just want to be a doctor or anything to help my people, but I can't. I'm just a kid. I don't even know what to do. I get scared, but not really that much. I get, I do anything for my people, but I don't know what to do. I'm just 10. I'm just 10. All of this, when I see I literally cry every day, saying to myself, why do we deserve this? Why, what did we do to this? My family said they just, they, they just hate us. They just don't like us because we are Muslims. Why does Muslims act for you like that? We're just kids, we're just... You see all of the kids around me? They're just kids. Why wouldn't you just send a missile to them and kill them? It's not fair not fair i mean in that video you know has been making its rounds that shout out to whoever was able to get that because i mean it's it's fucking disgusting that the fact that kids i mean like kids have to live through this kids have to see this and it's it's i mean it's just if if that doesn't do anything to you i don't know what will and it, and you know it just gets worse because she's one of many you see the vast majority of people getting killed are a lot of babies a lot of children that at that young age, she shouldn't even be, I mean, she speaks like an adult, right? You, you, you start growing up really fast. 
Yeah. She she like I want to be a doctor to help people. Like forget childhood, right? Yeah. Like forget playing. Like no, this is like now I have to help people because they're all dead. Like that that's not the way to do things. They, like and so this next one right here also uh had this little girl who was a survivor of the Israeli her uh, attack in twenty two thousand two in uh Gen Jenin refugee camp she stayed um that's where she was in the west bank and this is from the documentary Jen and Jenin and somebody put this on tiktok which this is where tiktok can come in and educate some people on this issue من من ناس زيهم هذول الجبنه ما خافش منهم زي الفيران بتخ يعني معاهم سلاح ومعاهم دبابات يبكوا يتزروكوا بين الدبابات خايفين منا احنا يعني مدنيين بس هم ارادتهم ضعيفه خوفهم لدرجه الجنون يعني مش طبيعي عندهم الخوف احنا ما بنخاف من منهم مش هو ما عملوا فينا ما بنخاف من منهم اسلحتهم نزلت علينا زي المي لانها نزلت من من ايدين فاشله نزلت من ايدين خايفه من ايدين مرخيه من من ناس زيهم you grew up fast, huh? Fair? Yeah, you can tell, right? They're just like they—they they seem like a, like the way they're talking. Like uh, it's like, what else are you gonna do? You have to fight back, right? So you, to tell people that are in an open air prison that they 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 should just not—they should condemn the violence, and they always, you know, overarch broadly, Hamas, Hamas, this, Hamas, that. Yeah. Like it, like that they should condemn the violence. What? How? Yeah. How could you? What? How could you not fight back? What? Do, what do you expect them to do? Like, what do you yeah. want them to do? Yeah. And Israel supported Hamas in the beginning. They wanted a countermeasure to the PLO, which was a secular socialist movement that involved Christians and Muslims, whatnot, Yaza Arafat. They didn't want that. So Israel backdoor funded Hamas against it. So now you want to cry Hamas? Shut the hell up. And so much has changed since then, too. This is, tar this is disgusting. Um, and here's another picture, a photo that speaks louder than words. Just a kid, look at a him. little boy. Look, look at how look, you know, at look at what is around his face. Look where he's at. They're just hiding. They're scared. At any moment, there could be a bomb, and they will all be completely gone. This is like. Can you zoom into his face, Johnny? This is this is why I just I'm not going to stop talking about this, right, guys? Like, I mean, this look is, at that. Like a little kid should not. In the and imagine the outrage if if Americans. If Americans got attacked the way these Palestinians, imagine the world. Oh, my God. Like, we, we have had one attack, of course. We, we, we can talk about 9-11 a million times, right? One attack by the, the people we, you know, we, we, we basically, we, we, we caused the attack. Well, I mean, we, this fund is, we funded <laughs> these people. Um, and, the, you know, we went to war. We did we did multiple occupations. We vilified an entire group of people, Muslims. We we literally started this whole thing. And it was buildings and, you know, an, an attack one time. Like, look, these people get attacked all the time. And the world has remained silent for the yeah. most part until now. I know so many people from New York, too, that get so aggravated when they see that. And they look at what happened on 9-11 and they go, oh, my God, can you imagine that? Well, I'm not downplaying what happened on 9-11. It was disgusting, right? This happens every day in the Gaza Strip. This has been happening for years. Buildings coming down, missiles, the whole nine yards. So why wouldn't we stop this? I mean, this has been a whole charade playing back and forth. You know what I'm saying? And for the military industrial complex to make money hand over fifth, fist, they allow this shit to happen. They cause, they up these things. They, they, they put fuel on the fire so they can sell their weapons and people can, be, can die for individuals to make billions and trillions of dollars let's stop it already this is crazy stuff right here too as well right mm -hmm. this is the knocking right mm -hmm. this this is this is this is something sick this is here. a warning this it's is what the, the idf calls they a call warning. it knocking right yeah. yeah yeah this is crazy i'm glad you put this, this in. is how the israeli military is warning palestinians of an impending missile strike in gaza a small missile shell is launched on the target, supposedly to give people a chance to evacuate. And then, a minute or more later, the real missiles hit. It's 
called roof knocking, and it's supposed to minimize the number of civilian deaths. The first one means get out. And the second one means business. Israel has used this tactic in previous operations in the Palestinian territories. Some families also get a phone call warning them of what's to come. This is how the Israeli military is. Look at that building Remember right there, Johnny. <laughs> Look at that. Is that, a, is that a military institution there? That's a fucking house. It's so... And, and the whole, this, you know, remember when the fucking cops, the feds, knocked on the window? Yeah. And Get then out. right after. And in two seconds, they it, broke everything. That's that times a million. That, like, that shit. Oh, we're going to warn you. No, you're not giving, you're giving them a minute? Like, are they a marathon runner? Like, how fast do you have to do you have to get your shit out? Like, to get not even your shit because you don't have time. Your family and yourself out of there. That's not a warning. A warning would be like, like literally, just literally saying, "Hey, we're gonna issue like a, a sound, get out, blah blah blah." And what? Well, this shouldn't happen. This shouldn't be happening. These are residential areas. They are targeting civilian areas. They are targeting houses. They are targeting hospitals. They're targeting roads to hospitals. They're targeting schools. They're targeting they're targeting every area where where they know Palestinians are there because their issue, their their desire is to exterminate Palestinians and to always, always, always blame it on Hamas, blame it on terrorists, to paint them as terrorists, just like this country did to a whole group of people years and years ago. Israel continues to do to this fucking day. Yeah, they want a whole Jewish state. They don't want Palestinians there. The they Palestinian want Muslims, no the Palestinian Christians, they want no them out. State. Think about that. Can you imagine if we did that? Hey, we're just a Christian state. Can you imagine if we did that? That's what they're Can fucking you, doing. That's what us. they're doing. So Netanyahu, and this is this is going to make you guys want to punch a wall. Netanyahu completely rationalized the attack on the AP and the Al Jazeera buildings. He completely rationalized the attack on civilians. Uh, all, all of course, using the the fact that they're all terrorists. So let's uh, thir at thirty six seconds, Johnny, and then um, we can stop it and start it. It's going to go about three minutes, guys. Uh, you know, note just notice how he answers the questions. And this is a mainstream media uh, anchor asking him these questions because they can't hide this anymore. How much longer? Are these hostilities going to continue? Well, we hope that it doesn't continue very long, but uh, we were attacked by Hamas on uh, our National Day, Jerusalem Day, uh, attacks, unprovoked attacks on Jerusalem, uh, and then thousands of rockets and missiles on our cities. Uh, and I think any country uh, has to defend itself. It has a natural right of self-defense. We'll do whatever it takes to restore order and quiet. Uh, and on the security of our people and deterrence. We're trying to degrade Hamas's terrorist abilities and to degrade their will to do this again. So it'll take some time. I hope I it won't civilians. take long, but it's not immediate. 2,900 rockets uh, fired on Hamas, according to one fired from Hamas, according to one report. But there's also a report that Egypt offered a truce. Hamas said yes. You said no. Why? Well, that's not what I know. And frankly, uh, if Hamas thought that they could just fire on our rockets and then sit back and enjoy uh, immunity, uh, that's false. We are targeting a terrorist organization that is targeting our civilians and hiding behind their civilians, using them as human shields. We're doing everything we can to hit the terrorists themselves, their rockets, their rocket caches and their arms, uh, but we're not going to uh, just let them get away with it. Neither would you. I mean, <laughs> you just imagine what would have happened if uh, you had uh, 2,900 uh, rockets fired on Washington and New York and others. I think you, you would understand our position. I think you do, actually. The Stop precision that. of that targeting has uh, been up for question. I like the way the mainstream media plants in the fact that it's, oh, it's 2,900 rockets were fired by you guys. Once again, we talked in the numbers there. You have 10 Israelis people who have been killed. You have over 200 Palestinians who have been slaughtered. Just, just in the last few days, few by days, the way. Right? Like yeah. the last week. Yeah. And the justification that they're, oh, they're, we're trying to hit terrorists, but they're hiding behind their civilians. So that makes it okay. Go in there and arrest people. Why are you firing missiles on these houses and stuff? No, dude. This is a lie. No, dude. No, no. Like, no, 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 no. Like, there are no fucking terrorists. 
There are no terrorists. You are occupying an entire fucking country yep. and you've been doing that since 1948. Yep. Okay? There there's the terrorists are you. You are the terrorists. You are bombing civilians and you're like fucking painting it like like it's fucking them. I mean, I'm just fucking about to fucking lose it right now. This is fucking disgusting. Like I can't. This guy is a psychopath. Yep. I can tell. He just the way he's talking like he's a fucking psychopath. Yep. And it's by militaries. Uh, it's by United States. Uh, the United backing. States is funding this. this right now. That's what we're the doing. United States this happens because we allow doing, it to happen. Is allowing yeah. this to happen. But tell me we're mitigating damage by voting for Joe Biden. And stick it up your God, ass. dude. No, like we were we were attacked. They sent missiles on Palestinians. They have been killing Palestinians. They have been evicting these people from their homes at gunpoint, killing people, shooting kids. Do you think that these people are going to spend the next 60 something years not doing anything about it? No, like this is anybody buying this narrative is justifying genocide because what's really happening is very obvious for everybody to see. Yeah, it's disgusting. You continue to play it, John. There's been a lot of focus on the bombing on Saturday in Gaza of a building that housed the Associated Press and Al Jazeera. The Committee to Protect Journalists demanded detailed and documented justification. This morning, there's a Jerusalem Post story that says the Americans were shown a smoking gun, uh, that proof that Hamas was in that building. What is that proof? Um, and did you show it to the Americans? Well, we share it with our American friends all that in intelligence. And here's the intelligence we had. It's about Palestinian terrorist, uh, a, a, an intelligence office for the Palestinian terrorist organization housed in that building that plots and organizes the terror attacks against Israeli civilians. So it's a perfectly legitimate target. Uh, and I can tell you that we took every precaution to make sure that there were no uh, civilian injuries, in fact, no deaths, no injuries whatsoever, uh, I can't say injuries. I don't know if somebody received a, a fragment of a, of a stone. I don't know that. But no people are killed. Now imagine, ask yourself, how is that possible? You see these high-rise towers that are used by Hamas over and over again. They collapse and no one is killed. Why does that happen? Because we, unlike Hamas, take special precautions to tell people, leave the building, leave the premises. We make sure that everyone is gone before we bring down those terrorist facilities. And that's the difference between Israel and Hamas. They deliberately target our cities, deliberately target our civilians. They glorify the death of children and, yeah. and civilians and old people. They are happy with it. I think they're happy with uh, any deaths that are caused to them. We grieve for every non-combatant loss in Gaza, and we grieve for all our civilians who die in Israel. Get... We don't, we're not happy with it, and we try to minimize it. We I try to, to minimize minimizing those cat Dude. 200 people, 200 people, a bunch of kids. And they're listen to this bullshit they're giving you. Fam. They live. There's a video out there of Israelis cheering for the death of these people. What do you mean you you grieve? Like literally all the all of the vast majority of Israel, oh, the gee. vast majority of Israel is cheerleading this. We've seen the videos of the IDF soldiers having parties or the people watching as they shoot these people in 2014. Like this is this this is like you're he's blatantly lying and he's saying that we take precautions. What what like doing the what is it the the knocks on the on the fucking roof and then a minute later bombing the hell out of the entire region. They're civilian the here, housing. They're civilians. He's They're not military bunkers. He's a fucking liar. Netanyahu's a piece of shit. Okay, he should be thrown out of office. I hope the government changes in Israel right now. I, I really do, because this guy, and I don't know if anything's going to change, because it doesn't make a difference who's in power, whether it be, you know, Rabin or Perez. The imperialist col colonial mindset still keeps going. And you saw okay? how and he that justified, never stops. too. He justified the, 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 the bombing of the AP and the Al Jazeera building, saying that Hamas intelligence is in there, yeah, plotting bullshit. against them. He lit and, and when he asked him again for the evidence, he said, oh, well, we, we speak to intelligence or and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. But he won't. They still to this point have have yet to prove any evidence that there was anything going on in there for them to have bombed that that building. Zero evidence. They haven't said what it is. They just say that there is. That's it. You want to play any more of this video? Or you want to get to the next part? Uh, well, we can just get to the next part. It's fine. Yeah. All right. So you got some tweets. You said tweeting is their jobs. Glad to know. I thought it was making legislation change. 
uh, change things and actually take action to oppose the empire destroying lives globally. Uh, you know something they can they campaign you know something they campaigned on. My yeah, bad. Okay, so I like to talk about this too. Go ahead. Yeah, this is ridiculous. dude. Like okay, so I'm this, done with the virtue signaling. This, I'm done with the virtue signaling. This this uh this dumbass. The squad is doing its job. Our job is to make the squad at least ten times bigger. Yeah, I Schmuck. want ten times the size of the squad tweeting because that's their job. That's their job is to tweet. Gee, oh my god, I should be get, I should be getting paid then because if their job is to tweet, like I can tweet better than them. I can actually say shit that's actually more substantial because right now they're like they're just sitting idly by and saying apartheid states aren't democracies apartheid states aren't democracies let's just start a tweet storm yeah. like let's not push any legislation we have power as congress people right they they have power like why don't you fucking do something about it yeah. why don't you push legislation they were able to within fucking days push legislation for impeaching Donald Trump. But what the hell are they doing? They're not in, they're not pushing legislation yeah. for this. Where where's the like how could they do it to get rid of Orange Men Bad? Who was so already out quickly? of office. <laughs> right. For a symbolic like bullshit, but they can't bring themselves to bring any legislation at yeah. all. And and even Rashida Talib, she's Palestinian. Where the hell like are you also like yeah. gra like owned at, yeah. By APAC, and, and enough, of the, enough no, of the resolutions too. Enough of the resolutions. Fuck the resolutions. Fuck the resolutions. Enough is enough. Make a bill that says that we're going to stop the. We're going to defund Israel. We're not going to give them any funding unless they abide by the UN Security Council's ceasefires and then stop blockading the ceasefires. We're on the side of Israel. We're we're tiptoeing around it. And why don't the squad for one do something? Hold your your own party accountable. People in your own party accountable, and then make legislations and laws to stop this shit. Millions Instead, they just put the virtue signaling out there. That's all they're this doing. This is wrong. This is wrong. Well, then do something about it. Hold your own goddamn party accountable. We Nancy put you Pelosi. in there, dude. We put you in there to fight the establishment, not to fucking placate and and run narratives for them and and do PR stunts for them and tweet. We didn't put you in there to tweet. You have millions of followers together. Start more protests. And demand Nancy Pelosi and Joe Biden defund Israel. That's what we need to do. That's There's what you no. Do. Th that's it. We need to stop any aid to Israel. We need to sanction and boycott Israel because ev every single country that we've sanctioned d didn't deserve it. This country actually does. Otherwise, you are complicit in the the killing and murder of these women, children, and innocent civilians. That's what needs to happen. That's it. Like, there is no two sides about it. There is defund fucking Israel. De un and s do not stop until you do. Because guess what? If people are out by the thousands now protesting for this, this is your moment to do something. It's not your moment to sit there and tweet. Because if tweeting is all that's required from government officials, we can all do a better job than you can. And that it's that fucking simple, dude. Johnny, did you get something you want to show us? Okay. So, uh, for Gorenchi. <clears throat> this other guy, because this was the section on politicians, right? Notice instead of, of, of saying the right thing and saying, you know what, I was wrong to say this, he doubles down. Andrew Yang, in response to a, a comment regarding his... What he said about Israel Palestine, he said, thanks, Eric. It was answered by a staffer who I think misunderstood the question. I believe that Palestinians should have a say in their future, but I do not believe that all refugees and descendants have the right to return to Israel. A a appreciate you calling it right. So what what happened was he had said something different before and people called him out on it. Uh, this was it right here. And this was the I think she put the full exchange here. Why is this happening? OK, here we go. Uh, should all Palestinian refugees and their descendants have the right to return to Israel? New York Times asked. And and Andrew Yang said yes at that point. Now he's saying he's clarifying that that's not what he meant. Yeah. So, saying that not, not everybody has the right to go. That's what he's saying. Yeah, yeah. Right. And so he's doubling down. Right. He's doubling down in in yeah. instead of instead of actually saying oh yeah by the way i was wrong no he's he's doubling now he's he's, he's trash i mean it, like anybody's trying to push andrew yang right now come on guys what what the hell are you doing uh elizabeth warren of course right elizabeth green bombs warren is saying israeli airstrikes that destroyed international media outlets and killed innocent gaza civilians tell us what we already know israel and hamas must work with negotiators and reach a ceasefire immediately and the u.s must actively support this effort Again, she can't say the word Palestinian. 
right? Notice she doesn't say the word Palestinian. She uh, she's both citing the issue. We have zero friends in D.C. Zero. Really, zero, zero in regard to this issue. They're all trying to whitewash it, pretend it's it's nothing. And we can't allow that that narrative to continue because for too long they've gotten away with it. They've gotten away with it. And anybody that's any in any way pro-Palestinian is maligned. And then they eventually they just give in to APAC and the influence of Israel in our government. And it's not anti-Semitic to say that. It's not anti-Semitic to say that it's a fascist regime, that Israel is an occupation, that Israel is, is our colonizers, that they're exterminating Palestinians in a genocide. And that has to be the narrative because that's the truth. If that wasn't the truth, I wouldn't be saying it. We wouldn't be sitting here and saying it if it wasn't the truth. There is nothing to be gained from being uh, uh, to, from telling the truth. And I think that a lot of people are waking up to that uh, notion, fam. They are listening to that those words you just said right there. Uh, more people are showing up for these protests than ever before. Yep. So there is some signs of encouragement. Here's Fiorella's tweet from what we witnessed the other day when we were on the ground. And this government Thousands and thousands of people this weekend. They tried to block roads. They closed down parking lots. Yep. We, they did whatever everything. they could. And fam, they were armed. They were ready to party. There's your yellow slinky. I don't know what you call that thing, but. Uh, <laughs> yeah, just worth noting, like, you know, the IDF, like, manual was used to train. The, the 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 police the 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 sheriff and the LAPD that and that the, I mean that's not a lie when I say like our foreign policy is our domestic policy that is what I mean it's the same death cult violent mentality this is Chicago or sorry this is LA still Johnny footage right Johnny footage here. yeah so I mean this is this was one of the best places uh the best protest I've been to, I think, for me, because as you saw in the last video, they were educating people on yeah. what was going on, that the U.S. is funding this. Then they went on to talk about other uh, other imperialist regimes that we have funded and other, you know, uh, coups we have done all over the global south. They had different speakers talk about that. I think that's important because a lot of the people, it might be the first time they're protesting. They might have just come because a lot of people came because of the videos that they saw. You, you know, they felt compelled to just go. They don't necessarily know what's going on. So this is a prime time to educate people on like why like the 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 context of what why this is happening I, I think the big thing is that once we do if we have enough if we muster up enough strength to really stop the bombing and stop the genocide what do we do moving forward what's the next move you know what i'm saying i know a lot of us yeah. would like to say okay well we have to recognize it's an apartheid state you have to get the hell out of there but we know that's not going to happen so what will mm. be the compromisation a lot of palestinians will say what well, go back to the late 1960s that what was agreed upon when we showed that graph and that's still i mean the, the palestinians still had a lot of land there and whatnot uh now it's just when you look at the map israel's taking going into settlement after settlement pushing out palestinians so i i really think that's the discussion of moving forward where do we go from here will be the question you know what i'm saying and what will be the solution and how do we obtain that solution? Uh, I really wish we had real leadership. I really wish we had grassroots people. I really wish that our elections were okay because we can really see a change fundamentally foreign policy-wise uh, across the globe because it is disgusting what the United States does and what allows it to happen. Look what we got over there. Look, look at the sheriffs in there. Armed to the T, right? They got They're, their They look like fucking, the military. They look like the military is right. And uh, what, was the wow. the, what was the need for that slinky? Like what? What, what, like, families, babies, kids, 
older people. That's who was at the protest. Yeah. All kinds of people from every age. Yeah. You what, can see you, there's nobody there think? militant there Nobody's at all. Nobody's there. Nobody. Antifa isn't there. All this bullshit. Like, none of that is. It, that's not what that was about. It was literally all kept extremely peaceful. The only, the, you know, and if you touch, if you touched, by the way, the, the, the what was Slinky. it? The. The, the the royal slinky the you know the the heavenly slinky like they would they started telling people don't touch it or we'll we'll come after you like they this is fucking like we why are they here armed like that like Shields. what is the necessity of doing that it's just you you make people feel a certain way uh, that's after of course of closing the roads of closing, of closing the parking the lots. sidewalks yeah. the parking lot and they still, wouldn't let people walk down sidewalks certain parts like you got to yeah. go around. They did everything in their in their power to try to minimize this this protest, but people weren't happening, and they showed up in the thousands. I'm very proud of them. I love it. And uh, and and take note, ladies and gentlemen, you live in a police state. If they're armed like that at peaceful protest in the United States, forget about it. <sighs> Johnny, you want to go to Chicago? By the way, this is up. Uh, this is up on our YouTube. Yep. No. Oh, this is exclusive footage Johnny's showing. I'm sorry. Was this with the camera? Or... Hmm. Yeah, in the beginning, we had internet issues. I think they were screwing with the internet, too. Because, like, I had 5G, and I was trying to send tweets, and yeah, they wouldn't They wouldn't let me send tweets and shit. But that's when it opened up a little bit, right? Yeah, so this was in front of the federal building, and uh, this, they were bl jamming the signals and had set up a perimeter around the federal building here in Los Angeles. This is what what, what area is Westwood or Westwood. yes, Westwood. Westwood, and that's the 405 highway. They blocked Close. off all e entries into the highway. You'll see over here, which makes that part makes sense, I guess, if you're having a protest. And I know that the the protesters reportedly got permits. That yeah to do this which is in most cases you know in LA any protests we've gone to or organized and you don't get permits but I think because they were dealing with the roads they had to because you're that's a road right there you're this part's really yeah this part was one of my favorite parts too the energy I didn't I was pleasantly surprised that that many people showed up like 25,000 I mean the media was reporting hundreds and yeah. <laughs> look at, you can just see that look at that you can see it's yeah. way more than hundreds and and uh, one of the great parts too fam is when there was these construction sites and yeah. some of these Palestinian supporters grew, uh, uh, climbed up to the top yeah. and waved their flags people would pull, point up and yep. notice it and start yelling and screaming. Yeah. They did it on the Boingo yeah. uh, parking structure too, as well. And you just felt that energy. It was pretty amazing. So, um, yeah. Chicago, right? Chicago had uh, twenty five thousand people as well um, that came out. And this is their second protest that was giant because their first one was Wednesday, last Wednesday, yeah. and then they had the uh, the the second one. Uh, just wanted to show a few. It's saying it's having trouble playing this video on yours. Oh, right? that's that's right there. I know it's so funny though, though it's. They're going to be blocking some things. 
Shout out to all our friends in Chicago. Yeah. Hard Lens. Everybody that's there. Ali. It's kind of weird the way they a lot of people were saying, well, the vi it got violent in Chicago. That's why they have so many police force here in LA. I'm like, no, it didn't. No, it if didn't. there was like a little scrap that broke out, and that's what the news does. They intensify those moments. You know, Ford Fisher was on Jimmy Dore the other day, and he was mm -hmm. talking about the way, and this is something, once again, that the mainstream media will do on both sides. They'll take a situation, they'll take a fight or something that happened on, and that's all they'll show of the rally. 90, 95% mm -hmm. of, of the rallies we went to are peaceful when it comes to Black Lives Matter and stuff like that. Same with these Palestinian marches. They're peaceful. Nobody was looking for trouble and stuff. If there's a little scrap that breaks out, the mainstream media highlights that, and that's all they show to make you think that this these protesters out there are violent, and it's just not the truth. Yeah. Yeah. Glory absolutely. Jones. And oh, this is still Chicago. Wow. And, oh, this is us? L.A. again. Oh, wow. Look this at is that. nice. That's when we march down towards uh, down Wilshire towards that one spot, right? Yes, and there's the... Uh, Look at that, guys. Look at all those people. You're near the construction site. Right above you is where they went up atop and stuff. That's great. Right above Johnny, they all climbed up to the top over there. See, right where Johnny's shooting, we were over there in that green area where the truck was. That's where we... I took a panoramic shot and I put it on Twitter, yeah. uh, which was just awesome. It was behind the trees, but we were behind those trees because it was so packed there were so many people tons of people and the quality degraded <laughs> yeah yeah so that's interesting uh but there you go there's yeah. thousands of people there it's kind of like a shot yeah yeah, yeah that's that's so. exactly it um and you know california okay chicago okay florida for florida to have the people that i'm seeing here thanks to glory jones who went to glory dade county miami <laughs> um I mean, this, I mean, pasta, you know, Florida is yeah, yeah. heavily, heavily, heavily Jewish. Oh, heavily, heavily, oh. like. Where I, she's I, at, forget about it. That's, you this know. This is, yeah. I mean, South Florida is predominantly Jewish. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I went to high school in Boca Raton. Like I said, I had a lot of mentors that were Jewish, to, you know, were from Israel, whatnot. Uh, so that area is just, I thought there would be so many more counter protests. Yeah. But uh, look at all those people. It's I mean, awesome. for, for Dade County, I mean, you know, Dade County, I mean, has a lot of Cubans, has a lot of conservatives, has a lot of, you know, like Jewish people, people of Jewish ancestry that are not, you know, yeah. going to be, I, I am like flabbergasted that this many people showed up. I think that's pretty freaking awesome. It's a lot of young people. Yeah. Uh, obviously, you know, the younger generations are different. Um, and that's something that we have to really put upon ourselves is to educate the younger generations because this is where it's at guys. Yeah. Like this is, that's it. Like everybody else, it's like, sorry, we were like, we're, where there's only so much we can do now for us, but like for, for them yeah. and, and what's to happen. That's, that's what, you know, that's what it is. And it isn't kosher fam. It's not kosher. And that's here's the thing. One. You don't have to be Arabic. You don't have to be a Muslim. There were to Christian Palestinians Palestinian. You don't have there. to be Christian to support Palestinians. You just have to be human. You just have to be human. That's it. Yeah. There's... This is about being a human being. These are children that are getting slaughtered over there. And there's no excuse, no matter what BB comes on and says, no matter what Joe Biden says, and no matter about the lack of real support for what's going on from the, the squad, it doesn't make a difference. You just have to be human and call it out. Get in the streets now. Complain to people. Show people. Enough is enough. This is Winwood, by the way. Winwood area glory mentions the effects of the protest bill remember in florida they passed that protest oh bill. yeah so people were trying to stay on the sidewalk but yeah. there's so many people that yeah yeah what are they what are they going to do arrest all those thousands of people like it's so funny because desantis passed this whole uh, <laughs> uh social media bill he's going to sack social media for for uh, uh censoring people whatnot and he passes a, a, a bill that's against censorship and then he passes the most censorship right to, to protest bill. on the ground yeah. it's so it's like jesus christ it's, one foot forward two steps back you know what i'm it's saying because it's the same thing it's like it's i only support sides. my ideology and exactly. that's exactly that. no that well you bullshit. have to be fucking consistent you have to be consistent whether you support them or not yeah it's their fucking right to protest exactly exactly it's their constitutional right yeah. and if you have laws that say if they break the law you can charge them you don't double the charges and stuff when it's not your ideology, that's just bullshit right there. That's, once again, libertarians should be outraged by DeSantis's bill.
a hundred percent. I'm just happy that I'm seeing more people pay attention. Um, Comrade you know. Cat. And this is um, Look at that above the, the next bridge. one is going to be Michigan. So that's Michigan right there. That's so awesome. Michigan came out and got the Michigan yeah i mean guys it's pretty awesome you know we had to we had to show this just so you guys can see that people are coming out now i think tomorrow is like a labor day international day of solidarity with palestine the labor movement is getting involved not unions i just thought it's like a labor thing i don't know if that's going to be anything but conflict or massacre fam yeah so conflict or massacre i just wanted to show this little chart right here no army um, no navy yeah, no air so force Israel, Israel has ground forces, 513,000 personnel, uh, several technologies developed in Israel, uh, Merkava main battle tank, Axorit armored personnel carrier, Iron Dome missile defense system, trophy active uh, protection system for vehicles, and uh, Galil and Tavor assault rifles. Israeli yeah. Navy, 20,000 personnel, 64 battleships, <laughs> uh, yeah. Five class missile corvettes. Yeah, and uh, again, like you can just see it, right? No air force. The Israeli has the, the, eighty nine thousand personnel, yeah. six hundred eighty four aircraft, including A four Skyhawks, F four Phantom twos, F fifteen Eagles, F sixteen Fighting Falcons, and F thirty five Lightning two. Notice what those are, fam. Those are American. No military budget for Palestine. I mean, they get, help. they get help from Syria sometimes or Iran. Lockheed Martin and Northrop Grumman made. Yep. Yep. There you go. American. How do you like it, Joe Biden fans? You see that? That's your hands. Full of blood, pal. Full uh, of blood. So the median age of the entire Palestinian population, this is something that, you know, we've pointed out before. Uh, others have pointed out before 43 percent of the population in palestine is from the ages of, of two of zero to 14 years old the median age is 17.4 just so you guys know when you're bombing civilians in palestine you're bombing children you're bombing kids children you're bombing not kids. even old enough to vote children who, who have become warriors because they have nothing left to who have become doctors and medics and you know um johnny if you go to the next slide just we're not going to read it but just so people could see it's it's a breakdown of the money, of of the money used to fund Israel. U.S. arms exports to Israel, and you can see the money and what that's used and for. That's only from 2012 to 2014. Yeah, yeah. I know, right? <laughs> and that was the Great March, if you yeah. remember that happened in, in in 2014. Well, imagine what that budget would look like now, what that looks like now. Psychopaths. Just so you guys can take into consideration what this has been until then, right? Yeah. Um, the U.N. Security Council, again, a reminder uh, of the members all called for the, the ceasefire between Israel and Palestine. You can see all of those who were in support. Yep. And you can see the one person, the yep. one country, I'm um, sorry, the one country that was, of course, in opposition to that. And that's the United States. The United Pure States. Pure veto power. They can veto it at any time. So it doesn't make a difference that 10 fucking countries say, let's stop it. If the United States says no, yeah. it's no. Veto but that's it. Biden, right? Veto it. Okay. This is, uh, they're aiding and abetting in genocide. And the next one I just wanted to show is the uh, reports. And this is of a few days ago, May 13th, 2021. You can go to the website. It's kind of difficult to figure out. But you can see the, 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 the blue ones are the, the launched at, at Palestine. The red are what's launched at uh, Israel. Yeah. And you can see that you can see it's hard. It's hard to say Israel has the right to defend herself when you see the vast disparity and the inequality and, and what's, you know, when BB was talking about all this bullshit, like you can tell, like he's lying. He's yeah. absolutely lying. 